the Gate of Tears. 30 kilometers or 18.6 miles wide, a gateway between Africa and Asia connecting the Red Sea to the Indian Ocean in one of the most unstable places on the planet. This is the Bab El Mandeb Strait. Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at a vital strip of ocean for world trade. The Bab El Mandeb Strait is one of several choke points on the planet, and that is the first thing we should address. What is a choke point? When it comes to trade, large-scale supply chains must be reliable to meet demand. Many of them have a choke point, which is their weakest link and, for any particular reason, is exposed to disruption. War, piracy, weak infrastructure or weather, all of them can play a role. Choke points can either be maritime in canals or straits, coastal in a port, or inland in a river or railway. Disruption at a choke point can be catastrophic, even if it lasts for a few days or a week. Price inflation, shortages, and political instability are byproducts of disruptions in supply chains. For example, the war in Ukraine is a reason for concern in the shipment of wheat to countries in Africa and the Middle East that depend on production from Ukraine or Russia to feed their populations. Countries in the Middle East and Persian Gulf are particularly exposed. Ukrainian and Russian wheat imports must pass through not one, not two, but at least four different choke points. First, through the Black Sea Railway and ports, the Turkish Straits, the Suez Canal, the Bab al Mandeb Strait, and perhaps even the Strait of Hormuz. There are over a dozen of these choke points on the planet, and almost all of them have seen some kind of disruption in this century. Yet they're not the subject of as much attention as they should, since they are of global strategic importance and critical to keeping the world running. Global trade hinges on complex dependencies and networks. Should a small link in these networks fail, millions of people could be in danger of starving or freezing to death. Let's get back to the Bab el Mandeb Strait. Its name means Gate of Tears in Arabic, which is quite fitting, seeing as it is located in a region struck by tragedy. This is a narrow strip of water, bordered by Eritrea and Djibouti on the southwest and Yemen on the northeast. The strait has two channels divided unevenly by Perim Island. The wider channel, the Dakt El Mayun on the west, is about 20 kilometers or 12.6 miles wide, 310 meters or 1,020 feet deep, and used by larger vessels. The smaller on the east side is Bab Iskender, stretching 5.3 kilometers or 3.3 miles wide, with a very shallow depth between 10 and 31 meters, used only by local navigation. It has seen its share of history, including the first human migrations, the rise of Islam, or the seizing of Perim Island by the British East India Company in 1799. Later, the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 made the strait an important piece of maritime transport, even more so after the discovery of oil in the Arabian Peninsula. The strait also witnessed the blockade of Iranian oil tankers in 1973 during the Yom Kippur War. Three nations are located directly on the strait, Eritrea, Djibouti, and Yemen. The Bab al Mandeb connects several exclusive economic zones, those of Djibouti, Yemen and Somalia in the Gulf of Aden, and those of Eritrea, Yemen, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt in the Red Sea. All except Eritrea are parties to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which is one potential source of disruption in the strait mainly between the Yemeni Hanish Islands and the Eritrean Islands on Eritrea's territorial sea. In fact, the Hanish Islands were a point of contention between Eritrea and Yemen. It took a tribunal to declare in 1998 that the islands belonged to Yemen. Other islands on the south belong to Eritrea and it's between these minuscule islands, the Southwest Rocks, and the Hanish Islands that the regime of passage applies. There is, fortunately, an alternative route available in case Eritrea decides to impede passage near its territorial waters. That passage is located north of the Hanish Islands and between them and the Abu Ali Islands, in what is known as the Abu Ali Channel. The rest of sea travel is between Param Island, belonging to Yemen and the coast of Djibouti, where both nations' territorial waters overlap. Like we said in the beginning, the strait is located in a highly unstable region. Eritrea is a dictatorship with one of the world's worst human rights records and is involved in a brutal conflict with Ethiopia over the Tigray region. The 1997 constitution was never implemented. There's no judiciary, no legislature, and no independent journalism. 
The government restricts expression of freedom or religion, as well as the work of international observers. The war in the Tigray region has led to conscription and forced labor to fill the needs of the army. As of 2023, there were over 580,000 refugees and asylum seekers from the country. Things don't get any better in Somalia, where the climate is relentless and famine and access to basic needs are perennial problems. The political situation is unstable, with the Islamist armed group Al-Shabaab regularly posing a threat to peace and safety. Car and suicide bombings, shelling and other explosive devices have been used against the population. Civilians, parliamentarians, journalists, anyone can be a target. Sexual violence, violence against children and repression of free speech show the horrific state the nation is in, with a reported one million people displaced as a result of a drought that began in January 2021. To make things worse, humanitarian aid has been hampered by terrorist attacks, bureaucracy and arbitrary taxation. As of 2023, the country is divided into zones of control between different opposing factions. The Somali government, the separatist zone of Somaliland, the terrorist group Al-Shabaab, which is an affiliate of Al-Qaeda, ISIS, autonomous armed forces and even places where local control is unclear. All this provides opportunity for terrorism on land and piracy in the water. Piracy close to the Bab al-Mandeb is a huge concern. Between 2009 and 2011, Somali pirates accounted for half of global piracy attacks. Fortunately, thanks to an international coalition, the number of Somali piracy attacks was greatly reduced, but in 2014, another conflict created a new menace to international shipping in the Bab al-Mandeb Strait. This takes us to the third nation with a direct geographical presence in this choke point, Yemen. The war that started in 2014 has forced 4 million people to flee their homes and left more than 20 million in need of assistance, including 13 million children, with both sides of this conflict to blame. On one side are the Houthis. The Islamist political and armed organization emerged in the 1990s and overthrew the Yemeni government in 2014. It has since taken control of different parts of the country. On the opposite side are the elected government and its allied coalition of Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Much like what we mentioned about Eritrea and Somalia, you'll find all kinds of human rights abuses, from persecution to blocking of humanitarian assistance. As of June 2023, hostilities remain at a low level. Oman mediated talks between Saudi and Houthi officials in April, while China has conducted mediation efforts between Iran, that backs the Houthis, and Saudi Arabia. So how does this impact maritime passage through the strait? Hopefully the conflict can end soon and put an end to the human tragedy taking place. On a secondary level, it would be great news for shipping. This conflict has been the main source of threat to the strait between 2015 and 2020, being responsible for numerous attacks from Houthi forces on ships, including those with neutral flags. The attacks are carried out with missiles or even remotely controlled suicide boats. The Houthis have even placed naval mines, and between 2015 and 2018, the international coalition forces disarmed almost 90 of them in the Red Sea. Some of them have drifted to the Gulf of Aden, causing explosions on commercial vessels. On a smaller scale, but still of importance, we should mention Israel and Iran's tensions. Both sides have allegedly attacked each other's commercial ships with mutual accusations. So a lot is at stake. Is it possible to have an idea of the consequences of the disruption in maritime passage through the strait? Yes, it is. First, how much goes through the Bab el-Mandeb and where to? In 2015, 53% of Oman and the UAE's wheat imports passed through the strait, followed by Saudi Arabia with 42% and Qatar with 35%. Almost 20% of global rice exports passed through the strait, the second highest value only behind the Strait of Malacca, whereas wheat represents almost 15%, the third highest value. Also in 2015, the percentage of global grain trade that goes through at least one maritime choke point rose to 55%. Wheat and maize constitute the majority of this growth in traffic coming from the Black Sea producers to China and other booming markets in Asia. 8% of the total grain exports went through the Bab al-Mandeb, which is double from its share in 2002. Between 2000 and 2015, imports of wheat increased by 98%. This is the food outlook, but the energy outlook is just as important. 
The Persian Gulf is a major energy producer with some of the world's most significant oil and gas fields. The U.S. Energy Information Administration estimated that in 2018, 6.2 million barrels of crude oil and refined petroleum products were shipped through the strait, 3.6 million northbound to Europe and 2.6 million southbound to China, India or Singapore. In 2017, 9% of all exported crude oil and refined petroleum products passed through the Bab al Mandeb. Should anything happen to disrupt circulation in the strait to the point of rendering it unusable, there are only two alternative routes. The two pipelines that run through Saudi Arabia or to sail around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. When it comes to natural gas or to be more precise, liquefied natural gas, the only route would definitely be around the South African Cape. A normal trip from the Persian Gulf through the Bab al Mandeb and the Suez Canal to Rotterdam, the busiest port in Europe, takes 22 days. If taken by the alternate route, it would take 39 days. Not only would it take up valuable time, but it would also come with an increase in shipping and fuel costs. To reach the port and oil refineries in the city of Augusta in Sicily, Italy, a trip around the African continent would take three times as long as the usual course. The other alternative is, as we said, to use the two pipelines running westward through the Arabian Peninsula. The first is the East-West Pipeline. It was built in 1981 and is 1,201 kilometers or 746 miles long. It crosses the entire Arabian Peninsula, connecting the Abqaiq oil field to the city of Yanbu on the Red Sea. It has the capacity to deliver 5 million barrels per day, with Saudi Arabia looking to expand the capacity to 7 million. Running parallel to it is the Abqaiq Yanbu LNG pipeline. It runs from the city of Shedgum, ending in Yanbu. The largest pipeline in Saudi Arabia has the capacity to deliver around 290,000 barrels per day. These pipelines are very important for Europe, as the continent imports most of its energy. Next are some of the overall figures regarding the EU and please remember that the EU does not represent all of Europe. In 2020, the EU imported 58% of its energy consumption. It imported 57% of its natural gas and 71% of its oil and petroleum products. The focus here is on energy imports from Russia, since the EU is looking to decrease its dependence on Russian oil and gas as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Imports of Russian gas were 43% and oil imports came in at 29%. At a more granular level, the figures can be substantially higher, as many countries import over half of their consumption from Russia. The EU will be looking to the Persian Gulf as one of its partners to compensate for the loss of energy imports from Russia. We have looked at how much longer a ship would have to sail if the strait was disrupted. What about financial costs? In March 2021, the ship Ever Given beached on the bank of the Suez Canal, causing a six-day interruption in sea commerce in the area with an estimated six to ten billion dollars in cost. The Suez Canal Authority filed a claim for $916.5 million against the owner of the ship. The result of the claim could have vast consequences. If successful, it could deter a rogue state from using a private vessel for disruption or terrorist action against another one or any attempt at blocking the channel. We should finally and briefly mention a project that would be of significance to Bab el Mandeb. It's called the Bridge of Horns and it was announced in 2007. The bridge would connect Yemen to Djibouti and include highways, railways and even water and gas pipelines. The massive project, if it ever came to fruition, would become, by far, the longest suspension bridge in the world. As of now, the longest is the 1915 Çanakkale Bridge in Turkey, completed in 2022 with 2.23 kilometers or 1.25 miles in length. The Bridge of Horns would surpass it by far. The first part connecting Yemen to Perim Island would measure 3.5 kilometers or 2.17 miles and the following section between Perim Island and Djibouti would measure 8 kilometers or 4.9 miles long. This almost unbelievable project also involves the construction of two cities, one on each side called Al Nur, meaning cities of light, run by renewable energy and built over a 15-year time period. The Al Nur cities wouldn't be a mere starting or finishing point at the Bridge of Horns. Al Nur in Yemen would host 4.5 million people and Al Nur in Djibouti would host 2.5 million. 
the cost of this massive project was set at 200 billion US dollars. Of course, this was all way back in 2007, so the cost today would be significantly higher. As of 2023, beyond the massive complexity of the project, the difficulty of habitable conditions in the region and the instability around it, nothing more about the Bridge of Horns has been said or revealed, and the project is believed to be either delayed or cancelled altogether. This is all we have for you today. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.